so I want to talk about the things that are hidden in plain sight that I call in our homes. And uh, I have sort of a hierarchy of things because there's so many things. People like say, oh my God, I can't do everything, you know. So I'm going to boil it down to sort of five, my five top areas. Um, and so the first one, and these impact our immune systems. So the first one are food additives. So according to the Center for the Science and the Public Interest, most food additives are unsafe in the amounts consumed or are very poorly tested and should be avoided. So this is our government telling us to avoid food additives, but <laughs> the stuff on the store shelves, they're there. And so we have to be the, the ones in charge and, and paying attention, start reading labels. So what I mean by food additives are artificial food color, natural flavors, MSG, which is a neurotoxin, aspartame and artificial sweeteners, preservatives, and pesticides. So I just want to go through a few of these. Um, artificial food dyes. So food is monitored by the Food and Drug Administration. Do you think that food, food dyes are safe? <laughs> What do you think? No, okay. Um, well, yeah, this was in um, Forbes magazine, the potential dangers of artificial dyes. And um, they are derived from petroleum and coal tar. Now, the thing that I discovered in my research was they're banned in Europe. Artificial food dyes are banned in Europe. Why? Because when they did studies of children who ate these dyes, Normal kids, they would have temper tantrums. So it exacerbates behavioral issues. So think about, you know, um, eating food dyes, were, they're, they're hidden everywhere. So, for example, like in Europe, uh, McDonald's, and, and I'm not endorsing McDonald's, but in Europe, uh, the, the strawberry sundaes are made from real st strawberries, and in the US, they're made from red dye number 40, the color. And Fanta orange soda in, uh, in the Europe and UK, are made from pumpkins and carrot extract. And here, they're, they're used uh, red dye number 40 and yellow dye number six. So here's like a typical meal. Um, I remember I went to um, the Chicago Children's Museum with my nephew and his son and my daughter, this is when they were young. And um, I thought, well, gosh, the Children's Museum, it's going to have really healthy food, right, for kids. No, <laughs> it had really awful, um, this was like a choice. So his son ordered this meal. It was um, mac, mac and cheese and some orange soda and a little bag of Skittles. And, you know, of course, my daughter was wanting it, but I, I said no, and I got her some salad and some chicken nuggets, you know. But um, sure enough, after, I'd say 20 minutes later after the meal, her, his son had a meltdown, and, um, and I, I was convinced it was from the food, the food dyes. So um, food dyes are found in things like kids' um, you know, cough syrups, Claritin. And the, the, the interesting thing is about these food dyes, it, it takes about um, only about... 40 to 60 milligrams of, of food dyes to cause this, uh, um, these temper tantrums. And a meal like that, the one that I just showed you, had over 100. So if you multiply that, say, three, ti three times, three meals, you know, you're getting, you're eating the yogurt with the food coloring, the candies. It's, it adds up. It adds up. So, and then, again, you know, the medicines and the vitamins, the food dyes, are, they're found in our vitamins, so you have to be really careful about what vitamins you're choosing. Um, yeah, this is, a <laughs> this is one of my kids. Our brains, you know, on, uh, on food dyes as well, and, and this is also the, um, the sugar-free. Anything that says sugar-free, you can, you can bet has aspartame in it. Ah, so, uh, yeah, I love to, like, go to the store and, f and look for products that people buy every day and um, that seem okay. So this is Jiffy, blueberry muffin mix, and then if you read the, f the fine print, it'll say, let's see if I can, oops. Well, it says in there, made with artificial blueberries. So <laughs> um, what, is, what are artificial blueberries? Well, it was um, 
blue dye number one and two, plus a partially hydrogenated oil, which is a trans fat. And I, I remember giving a talk at a, at a mom's group, and one of the women said, I just made this for my kids, you know. And it's like, did you read the label? No. So really, we need to be good label readers. Um, so a safe alternative would be, you know, to just to make yourself some muffins with real blueberries. Make sure they're organic, though. <laughs> Um, Gatorade, how many of you guys drink? No? Yes? Good, okay, well, there you go. It's got, not only it's got red dye 40 and blue one, it's also got sucrose syrup and uh, flavors and monosodium phosphate. Um, it's not the best, so a safe, a safe alternative would be coconut water, which is a really great um, drink. It's hydrating. It's not fattening, it has no coloring in it, it has no sugar in it. So I wanted to just talk about natural flavors for a minute. Um, natural flavors, they're, they're made in a lab. So um, it could mean that it's made from MSG, which is a neurotoxin that destroys our brain cells. And if you see the words natural fruit flavor on a label, it doesn't mean it's a fruit extract. It's a flavor, it comes from a chemical, it comes from the lab. So there's natural smoke flavor, there's peppermint flavor, vanilla flavor, et cetera. So you wanna look for natural, real flavors, not, natu not quote unquote natural flavors. So it's also allowed in, th in thousands of health foods. So um, it's just something to be aware of. There's not a lot of research on this yet, but um, I'm thinking this is kind of the next level to sort of pay attention to. So here's um, Cheerios, for example, very berry, made with real fruit, but it's got these flavors in it. And then mayonnaise, it's got um, artificial flavors and soybean oil, which soybean oil, for the most part, probably if it's not organic, 80% of the soy crop in this country is genetically modified. So um, I'm not gonna go into a, a lot about genetically modified food. I know that there's been speakers who've talked about it, but I do know that um, the pediatricians that I work with tell me that when they get the children off of GM foods, that their guts heal and their behaviors heal. So it's, they're hidden. There are a lot of these, um, these additives and colorings are hidden, and so you just need to be careful. And, so here's some safe alternatives. There's some natural mayonnaise, there's Cascadian Farms, um, purely O's that don't have any coloring, and then the peanut butter, I guess the last one, the, the bottom one is, is peanut butter, and um, it has, uh, it's a little hard to read, but it's got, um, it's got flavorings and preservatives and sugar, and so, um, Look for peanut butter that just is just 100% organic and no, no other additives, peanuts and salt, and, and that's all you really need. So, yeah, I mean, I, I go into people's homes and I help them detox because um, a lot of them, they have mystery illnesses, you know, and so um, I went into this one woman's home and she said, a weed, all organic, and then I opened up her refrigerator and she had a jar of Skippy. And... I pointed out that you know Skippy peanut butter, the number two ingredient on it was hydrogenated oil and sugar, and she said, "Oh, you know, we just we feed it to the dog. That's why we have it there." <laughs> but anyway, later on, before I left, she she told me that she was embarrassed, and she said, "Well, the reason I get this peanut butter is because my kids don't like the natural." But there are there are lots of different varieties, and I'm sure you can find one that's. Not gonna kill you. <laughs> okay, and here's some others um, that have strawberry flavor, for example. Again, these are not made with fresh strawberries. These are made with artificial um, ingredients that come from the lab. And so these things build up in our systems. Um, we wanna just eat as close to nature as possible. A safe alternative would be getting a bottle of Perrier, squeezing some orange juice, you know, making your own. That would be a really safe alternative and delicious. So I wanna talk about preservatives. Um, 
What do you think the shelf life of a loaf of bread should be? One or two days? Okay, so um, before I had the slideshow, I used to have like a, a show and tell and I would bring products to show people. So I picked up a, um, a, a loaf of this bread. It was, uh, it was from Safeway and it was called, you know, 100% whole wheat bread. And the reason I, I bought it was because I wanted to show 100% that if you see the words made with, it could mean only 1%, let's say, of the food can, you know, has that ingredient. So if it says made with whole grains, you might only be getting a fraction. So I was trying to point out, if you're looking for whole grain, get something that says 100%. So I had this loaf of bread, and I, it was in my pantry. It wasn't in my refrigerator or freezer. And I noticed that it was now nine months had gone by, and there wasn't a speck of mold on it. And this, the bread was as soft as the day I bought it. And I just thought, what is going on? What does this have in here? And this wasn't Wonder Bread. This was like a 100% whole, whole wheat bread. Well, it has calcium propionate, a mold inhibitor. And boy, this stuff works. I mean, it really works. Um, now, the interesting thing in my research, I discovered that calcium propionate causes ADHD behavior in rats. So can you imagine? So... True, we're not rats. However, if you think about it, um, you're eating you know, a couple of slices of bread for breakfast maybe, and then you have a sandwich for lunch, maybe you have something else in the evening, you're getting a lot of this calcium propionate. So, and then here's another, oops, wait, I went back, uh, partially, um, it says at the bottom here, partially produced with genetic engineering. So again, something to pay attention to. Um, but this, this has um, dextrose in it, which is another form of, um, of sugar. So it's just important to, to pay attention to, to what's in your bread. And you know, find a bread or any product with, with only just a small amount of ingredients, maybe three ingredients. Michael Pollan says, you know, three to five ingredients tops. So when you start to see the paragraph worth of ingredients, you know that that's a red flag. Now, BHA and BHT, these are preservatives that they're putting in the wrappers of our cereal boxes. And again, banned in Europe, the UK, and Japan. So they know something we don't know, or we know it and we're just continuing to use it because it's inexpensive. Um, and it's also found in gum, in trident gum. So I want to talk about pesticides. You know, I consider pesticides an additive, a food additive, even though you, know, you can't see it, smell it, taste it, it's there. Pesticides are designed to destroy the nervous system of bugs, and so you need to start thinking, what is it doing to our nervous system? I remember driving along the I-5 down in California, and I saw a guy just like this. You know, um, this little rodent is saying, do you also eat with that mask on? I said, well, yeah, I mean, I just saw, you know, him spraying all this toxic chemicals. So th the workers are suffering, and we are suffering as well. Um, there are toxic pesticide residues on our fruits and vegetables if we're not buying organic. Is organic better? Everyone asks me, well, it's more expensive. Well, okay, an organic apple has 300% more vitamin C than uh, a non-organic apple and 61% more calcium, which is pretty significant. Um, organic spinach, seven times more calcium and 117% more potassium. And organic tomatoes have 97% more antioxidants. You know, we have to think about the food that we're eating as supercharging our cells, and we want to eat the best quality food. Like, why not? Why not spend the money on that? I shop at a farmer's markets. Uh, I'm growing my own herbs. I, I'm loving that. And I know that it's feeding me. It's feeding me you know, on a deep level, and um, it's good. <laughs> So um, let's just do a little experiment here. Uh, the, this is from the Environmental Working Group. They have uh, what's called the Dirty Dozen and the Clean 15. So um, here's a group of 10 fruits and vegetables, and I, 
I wanted to know what you thought was, was the, let's pick the top three, well, let's number one, which has the most toxic pesticide residues? Uh, strawberry. Okay, good. And then number two? Apple. Oh, you're a smart group. Okay. And then number three? Well, it's the greens. This is spinach. So what I wanted to talk about, the strawberries, are that um, you can't wash off the pesticides from a strawberry. The pesticides are injected into the root system and it comes up into the flesh. So if you're not buying organic strawberries, you're really doing yourself a disservice, so it's really important to eat in season. Um, apples as well. Now, potatoes are another one that are pretty high, and again, the, the pesticides are injected into the root system, so even peeling the potato is not gonna get rid of that, the pesticides. And then the clean, the clean ones, the ones that, have the least, what do you think? Grapefruit? Yeah, onions, and um, here I have my list. Let's see, when I went the wrong way. Um, yeah, avocado is the cleanest. It's, it has the, uh, the, pe the peel, and then onion, and asparagus, I was surprised to know that is, is pretty safe. So, um, yeah, this was their 2017 list of the top 10. And um, so when you're shopping, it's really important to pay attention to, to the ones, you know, especially the, the top five that have uh, the most toxic residue in it because those are the ones that are going to be lingering. Now, the good news is when you change your diet and go to organic, those, those pesticides rinse out of your body quickly. They don't, they're not held in the fat cells that a lot of the other, some of the other chemicals are, but pesticides, um, it's a quick fix. So uh, I really recommend that you start to shop at farmer's markets, start to grow your own food. Um, I just remember going to an apple orchard, an organic apple orchard when my daughter was in school, and uh, I had never, I grew up in New York and, you know, didn't, had never been to an apple orchard, and I, I just remember like walking up to this tree and picking an apple and eating it, and it just was a transformative experience. It's the, the fragrance of the apple was so amazing. Um, most of the apples we buy in the supermarket have no scent. So um, if you have an opportunity to do that, it's really, it's, it's great. <laughs> so this is from, um, uh, a film and uh, unacceptable levels, and so this was a non-organic uh, tomato has 35 pesticide residues. Five are known or probable carcinogens, three are developmental or reproductive toxins, and 14 are suspected hormone disruptors. Six are neurotoxins. So what a hormone disruptor is, is it messes with our hormones. Um, you know, hormones. Uh, there's sex hormones, there's hormones that make you gain or lose weight. Um, it, this is big. You know, this is, I think it's something that we really are not paying attention to. We just think, you know, oh, it's in the grocery store, it's fine, it's been tested for safety. It hasn't been. It really hasn't been. So if, if you can walk away with one change uh, after this talk would be really start eating organic as much as possible. Look for um, USDA organic uh, sign, the sticker on, uh, on food. And now, um, at the farmer's markets, you won't always find this, but talk to your farmer, find out their practices, you know, ask them if they're spraying, um, ask them what kind of fertilizers you're using in their soil. They'll tell you, they love to talk. And, um, so, there, you know, these little, these little white stickers on the fruits and vegetables, and there's a, there's a, a little code. Um, it's a five, it has a five numbers on it, and um, if it says nine in the front, so it'll be certified organic like this tomato, and um, if it has an eight on it, that means that it's, um, it, it's non-organic, and then um, if it's got a, f so if it's conventional, if it's, if it's an eight, it's a genetically modified. So um, look for the number nine 
it, the first number should be the number nine, and that'll sh it'll show you that it's organic. Sometimes I've been to stores, and it'll say organic blueberries, and then I'll look at the sticker, and it'll have a four on it, and I know it's not. So sometimes they're trying to sell you um, something that's not true. So you need to be an educated consumer. Easy to, easy to remember, I think. Just look for that number nine. So food additives, you know, in summary, can cause hormonal imbalances, weight gain, decreased energy level, mood changes, digestive uh, distress, and um, just really uh, try to avoid processed foods and GMOs for sure. Thank <laughs> you.